2019, DES and the subject PHE 31. Presenter, Mrs. A.C. Stain, 081-277-5321. Good morning, I'm Mrs. Ansi Stain, your tutor for PHE 31 for this year. Welcome to the presentation to this subject. I hope you enjoy your studies and that you will be successful this year. Success comes with dedicated, consistent work. My contact details are 081-277-5321, that's the cell phone number, and ansistain at hotmail.com, that's my email address. You're welcome to contact me from Mondays till Saturdays from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. You can either phone me or SMS or email me. In the latter case, I can send you a detailed answer. Please feel free to ask if anything is unclear or if you have problems regarding your subject. I'm willing to assist as far as I can. I'm going to discuss the most important facts of each unit separately. You will then be able to follow the content discussed if you page through your study guide while I'm discussing the content. Please note that this presentation is not a discussion of the exam paper, but of the most important content for the whole year. As an introduction to the study guide, I'm shortly going to explain some information regarding the guide itself. When you turn to the front of the study guide, you will find a detailed table of content. Here you will find the headings of the complete content and you will be able to have an overview of your subject for the year. Take time to read through it to familiarize yourself with the content you're going to study. On page one, you will find very important information regarding the time you are required to spend with the subject in order to be a successful student. Because this is distant teaching, it is very important that you spend adequate time right throughout the year with your study material. To just start studying before the exams will not be wise and will be hard to write the exams successfully. I recommend that you spend time every day with your studies. Even half an hour every day will be worthwhile. Consistency is the key to being a successful student. When you turn the page, you will find verbs, thinking, processes. These words form the key of the assignments and also the exam paper. For example, when you are requested to analyze facts, you will have to present facts in detail. And when you have to outline, you have to only give an overview and present the main features. Make sure to know what is expected of you when these verbs are present in your assignment and exam paper. Also read through 9 and 10. When you turn to Unit 1, you firstly find the table of content uh, of this unit and then the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are an indication of what content you will find in this specific unit. Learning activities, in short LA, follow the learning outcomes. In these learning activities, you will find specific questions regarding the content of the specific unit. It will be wise to firstly try to answer these questions on your own and thereafter look at the answers which are at the end of each unit. When studying for the exams, use these questions to study because they form the core of the content and are very important. Do not forget to also study the assignment you completed because some of these questions will also be asked in the exams. 
So let us start with each unit separately now. Follow in your guide as I discuss the content. Unit 1. First of all, you need to understand what physiology is. Physiology is a division of biology, and to be more specific, it is the science how living organisms function, where, as anatomy, is about the structure of the body, what the parts of the body, body look like, their shape, and where the parts of the body and organs are located. This is set out in detail in 1.1. That's physiology and anatomy. In 1.4, certain fitness terminology are defined. I'm only going to concentrate on a few, which you should know by heart. The first one is blood pressure. Blood pressure is the amount of pressure or force of blood against the walls of the blood vessels. The core is a group of muscles made up of the abdominals, the lower back, the obliques and hips. Then flexibility is the measure of range of motion and movement around a joint. The ability of the muscle to, perf to perform repetitive, that's repeated contractions, over a prolonged period of time is called muscular strength or just strength. And the last terminology to know is obesity. A weight or disorder, characteristics abnormal for someone's age, gender, height, and body type. Make sure to know them, but also to understand what they are. In 1.10, the very important topic, namely how a coach can develop teamwork amongst members of a sports team, is dis discussed. It is important that the coach knows the players. In other words, that he or she must know their strengths and also their weaknesses. He or she should also know how to communicate effectively to get the most out of the players. They should feel valued and listened to and problems should be addressed as soon as possible and effectively. There are more to this topic study them all to know them. The last topic of importance can be found in LA, remember that's learning activity, five, at the end of the unit, unit one. How can one monitor your own fitness? By writing down and taking note of the following. The amount of time spent exercising how much weight was lifted, the resting heart rate, and did you find the exercise hard or easy? These will help to establish improvements by challenging them to get more fit. Please take note that it is also important to study the assignment you completed. For example, to fill in question 1.2 of your assignment, you had to read Unit 1 to find the answers, like the meaning of BMI and the aim of physical education, etc. Make sure to find these answers and study them. We're going to concentrate on Unit 2 now, where phases of motor development are discussed. In 2.3, the four important phases are discussed in detail. The first one is the reflexive movement phase, starting at birth up to one year, whereas infants engage in reflexive 
and involuntary movements, meaning that they are not learned but come naturally like sucking, which is a survival mechanism for newborn babies. The second one is the rudimentary movement phase and it includes actions like reaching for objects and sitting, standing and walking. These skills are developed from zero to two years of age. The fundamental phase occurs from two years up to seven years of age. Children gain increased skills during this phase by refining skills like running and th uh, throwing. The last phase is the specialized movement phase which begins at about seven years of age up to adulthood. The skills are no now more for accurate and focused. Study these in detail as found in 2.3. 2.13.1 concentrates on coaching styles. There are three main styles, namely autocratic, where the coach makes all the decisions and is bossy, the de democratic style, where, uh, where shared decision making takes place, and the laissez-faire style, where the coach makes few decisions and the learners take ownership and make decisions. Decide for yourself in which kind of coaching style you would want to get involved and which one is best, but study them to know them in detail. We're going to page to unit three now, where specific gymnastic exercises are described. A PE teacher and coach should know exactly how these ex uh, actions should be executed. Otherwise, children can, can get hurt and it can be dangerous uh, if done wrongly. The exercise to concentrate on can be found in 3.3. Bench cartwheels is a specialized exercise which should be done correctly. Study to know exactly how it is, uh, should be done 100% correctly. That's bench cartwheels from the start up to the end. We use balances every day. Even when walking, we balance ourselves to do it correctly and effectively. There are quite a few types of balance exercises. Know their names and also what they entail, as found in 3.6. In 3.8, rhythmic floor routines are discussed. This entails that exercises are done by gymnasts on the floor with or without music, using rhythm to express themselves. To help with these exercises and to contribute to the aesthetic nature, certain apparatus are used, like ropes, hoops, balls, clubs and ribbons. Acquaint yourself with this content. You must also be able to discuss what these rhythmic floor uh, exercises entails. This content can be found in the first paragraph of 3.8. Study this extensively. Unit 4. Now, Unit 4 is about training issues and the management of events. First of all, you should be able to identify which kind of actions speak of good and which of bad sportsmanship as found in 4.20. What would you say if a player questions the decisions of the referee during a soccer game? Would that be a good or bad sportsmanship? It would be bad sportsmanship because it can lead to chaos if each player questions the decisions made during a game. 
Can you think of an example of good sportsmanship then? By congratulating their opponents after they won would be a good action. Now you should be able to name but also to identify good and bad sportsmanship. As a PE teacher, it can be expected from you to organize a school athletics or sports event. It is crucial to know what to organize and take care of before such an event in order to make it successful. There are quite a few things to take care of. For example, who is the event for? When is it going to be held? Where is it going to be held? Who will participate? Who will help with the event? Finances, etc. Study 4.22 in detail to know how to organize and execute a successful event. Learning activity one of unit four requires a discussion why sport builds character. 4.1 also explains this in short. Sport builds and improves physical endurance, moral habits, goal setting, planning of time, concentrating and confidence. You should be able to name these capacities but you should also be able to discuss each one of them. This is not discussed in the study guide, but you are required to read up and acquaint yourself with the details of each one of them. You should also be able to define character and what attributes sport helps to build. See learning activity one for this. So this content requires extra effort from your side in order to be able to discuss this topic. The important content of Unit 5 can be five, uh, found in 5.3, 5.7 and 5.12. In 5.3 the rules of cricket are set out. There are quite a few rules so I'm only going to discuss a few but you can find them all in 5.3. Two teams, teams take part, each made up of 11 players, that's in cricket. There's a reserve player called a 12th man. Umpires apply the law and make sure the rules are up, upheld right through the game. Two umpires are in place. If they are unsure about a decision, they refer it to a third umpire who reviews slow motion video be placed to make a decision. These are but a few rules. Also study the content of game structure for more rules. In 5.7, the procedure on how to execute a basic pass of a rugby ball during a rugby game is discussed. Now it's like as follows. You run straight, you hold the ball with both hands, you look at the receiver of the ball, you pass at chest height in front of the receiver, be sure the pass is made laterally, that's sideways or backwards. Complete the pass and follow through by pointing hands at the receiver. There are steps two and three also. Study them too. Now, a study tip. An easy way to study techniques, I think, is to actually do the action yourself while you talk it through. In that way, you know how it actually should be done and you have done that yourself which make it more familiar. In 5.12, first aid procedures are discussed. When treating an injury, it is essential to follow 
the RISE method. Now, RISE stands for, the R stands for rest, the I stands for ice, the C for compression, the E for elevate, and the R for referral. They form the words RISE. But you should know what, you, what each key word implies. In short, R for rest implies the injured person should be kept still to avoid further injury. The I for ice stands for applying a cold pack for the injury for 20 minutes every two hours. The C of riser, which stands for compression, apply a compression bandage covering not just the injured area, but the areas above and below too. The E for elevate, elevate, that means lift to a higher position, the injured area to stop bleeding and swelling. And the R for referral, refer, refer the injured person to a professional, like a doctor, for a precise diagnosis. You should be able to know the name of the method, what each letter stands for, but also what each word entails. So make sure to study this in depth to know it by heart. Also important in 5.12 is how to do rescue breaths as follows. Ensure the cas uh, casualty's airway is open. Pinch their nose firmly closed. Take a deep breath and seal your lips around their mouth. Blow into the mouth until the chest rises. Remove your mouth and allow the chest to fall. Repeat once more. That's rescue breaths. Again, a study tip will be to, practice, to uh, be to practice this on your own so that you actually experience the complete procedure. So when we turn to Unit 6, it is about games to develop fitness and skill. First of all, you need to know what games are for small groups, as set out in 6.3, for large groups, see 6.2 for that, for pairs in 6.1, and tag and dodging games in 6.4. You need not know how to execute all these kinds of games, but you should know the names of these games and you must be able to identify them. For example, if I mention soccer, you should know that it is a game for large groups. For tennis, that is, for example, a game for pairs. And the game end ball is a game played by small groups of people. So study all the names of all the games mentioned in 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, and 6.4. 6 6.5 describes how team races should be played. The one of importance here is sack race. It's as follows. Feed sacks are used, or large pillowcases. The team members must stand in the sack and hop down to the line shown to them. Then they must turn around and hop back to their team's end line. The first team to get all the players to complete the race wins. As always, play this game yourself to acquaint you with it. While playing the game, talk yourself through it. A very important topic is how physical education will maintain order, that's a physical education class, and a teacher, how will you maintain order without spoiling the more relaxed environment 
and the enjoyment. A PE class is not as disciplined as, for instance, a maths class and can quickly turn into chaos if not managed correctly. Tips on how to do this are discussed thoroughly in 6.9. Make sure to know these tips. When we turn to Unit 7, 7.3, 7.5 and 7.6 are important. Not all people can move to rhythm easily, but it can be learned. What are these elements and how can they be taught? You bop your head, you shift your weight, you move your feet, you add some hip action, you get your arms moving and style. I only mention the headings to follow to help with learning rhythm. Study all the headings but also know what each one entails as found in 7.3. To dance with style has many benefits. In fact, 10 benefits are set out in 7.5, like it keeps the body and brain active. It improves strength and flexibility. It improves body posture, etc. But you must study all 10 of them. Loud noises can have a negative impact on human beings. It has an impact on our health. It causes stress reactions. It has an impact on people's performance at home, at school or at work. It causes weight loss and mental and physical stress. It keeps us from having a deep sleep at night so the body cannot relax and repair itself. It has even an impact on our immune systems. Study all these negative influences of too loud sounds as set out in 7.6. Now in the last unit, Unit 8, also has quite important content. First of all, in 8.2 there is a table containing explanations about the systems, the organs, the tissues, cells and chemicals of the body. Study to know what each one of these entail. For example, organs are a group of tissues precisely arranged so that they can work together and cells are the smallest living unit in the body. Study to know them all. To be unhealthy and unfit has many consequences which are set out in 8.4. Study that also to know them all. It is part of a PE teacher's job to teach children the importance of personal hygiene. Personal hygiene involves the hygiene of the whole body, the hair, the hands, to wash every day, to brush teeth twice a day, to wash the feet well every day, etc. Have you ever thought why and how you will teach your learners the importance of your, uh, personal hygiene? Let your thoughts go on this topic because it is such an important part of life and should be taught to learners. And 8.5 will help you with this. In 8.6, certain skin conditions are discussed. You, sh you should be able to identify these skin conditions. For example, if the tiny oil glands, uh, uh, glands of the facial skin become infected and inflamed, the condition is called acne. Psoriasis is a skin condition that causes it to be red, flaky, patches. In fact, there are five types of psoriasis, namely plague psoriasis, 
which is found around the elbows and knees, guttate psoriasis all over the body, flexural psoriasis around skin folds, postular psoriasis, palms of hands and soles of feet, and scalp psoriasis, which are around the hairline. Too much exposure can cause skin cancer. And do you know what eczema is? You have to study the names of these conditions and also where they may appear in 8.6. The last paragraph of interest is the very important subject of drugs and the harmful effects it has on humans. Cocaine, ecstasy and marijuana are discussed in 8.9. Make sure to know these effects by heart so that you will be able to discuss them. Now this concludes my discussion regarding the most important facts in your study guide. As men mentioned previously, make it your priority to study right throughout the year, consistently and every day, even if only for a short while, but every day. Please note that you only need to study your study guide for these exams. Before you study the actual content, you first need to acquaint yourself with the learning outcomes of each unit. These learning outcomes form the core of the studies and guide you through the content and can be found at the beginning of each unit. After you've studied this, you will know what the unit is all about. And thereafter, you must look at the learning activities which follow the learning, at, uh, which follow the learning outcomes. It will be wise to do all these activities to the best of your ability before looking at the answers of each unit, at the end of each unit. After you've completed them, you can go back to the answers at the end of the unit and measure your knowledge against the complete answers. In this way, you will get to know the content and also will know how questions can be asked in the exams. The study guide contains adequate information and facts. It is not necessary to study from any other source for the exams. And remember to also study your assignment for the exams. Remember that when answering a question, facts from different parts of the study guide can be applicable. It's not necessarily limited to one part of the guide. It is important to note that although physical and health education may seem as a non-exam subject for learners and a period where learners are encouraged to explore in a less formal environment, you as teacher should exactly know how to keep them busy and how and why certain activities should be presented. Therefore, Important, the teacher should know certain facts about the subject PHE, as well as the correct procedures regarding the presentation of PHE. It is therefore of utmost importance that you should, you as teachers should know facts regarding the subject PHE. I stress this because some students are of the opinion that this subject does not need to be studied for and then they do poorly in the exams. Take time to know your study guide in order to present adequate facts during the exams. But lastly, please also note that short answer questions will be asked and the following kinds of questions can be asked. The first one, to fill in words left out. For example, uh, what is used during relay races? And then you must fill in the correct answer being baton. Then the next one, possible answers can also be given and you have to choose the correct answer to fill in, in the spaces provided. The third one, definitions of certain terminology. For example, of strength. The definition of strength is the ability of the body to exert a maximum force against a force 
external to the body. And another type of short question is where you're going to uh, get two columns, column A and column B. In column B, uh, A, you find certain facts. The first one here is exercise beneficial for a short put athlete. The second one given here is speed. And the third one is chocolates and sweets. Then in column B, there's a, a B, C, and C. A is not a healthy option to eat. B is lunges, and C is the ability to move from one place to another in the shortest time possible. Now, you must find the correct answers. For one, what would you say? Would it be A, B, or C? For two, what would fit? A, B, or C? And for three, what will be the correct answer? A, B, or C? Let's look. The correct answer is 1B. In other words, exercise beneficial for a short put athlete will be lunges. 2C and 3A. But remember, you have only fill in the correct letters. Do not write out the words as given above. 1B, 2C, 3A. Please feel free to contact me regarding any uncertainties and questions you have about your subject. Good luck with the exams. You will be rewarded for hard work and dedication.